Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Chris and in today's video we are going to be doing a hutch makeover. I'll be taking an old hutch that I've had for the last several years and turning it into something that is more of my style today. I hope in today's video I prove to you that you don't have to be a professional in order to tackle these types of tasks. I am no professional. I am an amateur. I've been doing this for five or six years and I still learn things as I go. I will still make mistakes or I will still have some idea in my head that won't turn out like I'm thinking it's going to turn out. I also will be sharing those moments in my videos just to prove to you that you can, you can make a mistake and yet you can still achieve the look that you're going for in the end. So with that being said, let's make over a hutch. Alrighty, so I'm gonna take off the hardware first thing. Um, I'm not planning on using these doors or replacing these doors back on here. Um, I'm going to try a look without them. And so I'm gonna go ahead and get started by removing the hardware. I'm gonna have to take this video in a few different clips. Um, because I can't get this top off. It's a little too heavy. So I'll have to wait till my husband gets back and helps me. And then that'll be in the same video. Just I'll probably be wearing different clothes. <laughs> but anyway, let's go ahead and get the hardware off. I'm going to use a bag to put this hardware in for each cabinet just so I don't lose track of them. Forgot to take something off. Oh, these little magnets here. And it's a good idea to mark your cabinets from where they came off of. Like I know this one came off of my left side and the other one, of course, the right. Um, but it's a good idea because I heard that sometimes they don't always match up. And I've got a Sharpie here. I'll do that on the inside of these. Probably right on the hinge here. Because it's going to be covered up anyway. And this was the right, so we'll use. And since I'm not going to put these doors back on, I'm just going to set these aside for possibly another project. Probably storm it as a plug back. <laughs> All right, so I think we got all the hardware off. I'm gonna have to fill some holes with some wood filler. And I believe I'm gonna wait until after I clean it and get all this grease off or any residue buildup off. Um, but before I do that, I'm, I'm gonna need to get this off the top or off the bottom. Uh, so to be continued. <laughs> Okay, so got the top off. Yes, it took two of us and it was very, very heavy. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start with cleaning. I'm going to use this Fast 505 from Zep. I usually use crud cutter, but I am out um, and I had this on hand. So I'm gonna, just going to use this and we'll get to cleaning that. I've got some gloves here that are made for uh, stripping. So I'm just going to wear these just to protect my hands. Um, I would recommend safety goggles, just anything to protect yourself, apron if you don't want to get your clothes messy, but 
these are my whatever clothes so and I need a towel Got a wire brush, a couple different bristles on it, real, real coarse to help with cleaning. I think for most people, the cleaning part is the worst next to sanding. Um, but it's really important to get all that grime anything that's caked on over years because i bought this used um back in 2011 for like a hundred dollars i don't think i ever gave it a real good cleaning other than you know just wiping it off with some 409 or something like that multi-purpose cleaner um but i decided i want to make this over um so it's going to need a really really good cleaning and it's going to be a little time consuming, but it's going to be worth it in the end. I can tell there's a lot of browning coming off when I'm cleaning this. Um, I'm going to be painting it kind of an off white color. So I am going to want to block that. Otherwise, it's going to bleed through. Um, so I'm going to find me some type of stain blocker. Um, and when I figure out which one I'm going to buy, I'll let you know on that part. This one is hung up. It's probably going to need a repair of some sort. But I'm not going to know until I get it up. And there's no access to the bottom. There we go, I think. Yeah, that track is loose, so we'll get to fixing that at some point. Um, I do have the top part. I don't know if I mentioned this, but I do have the top part in another room. Um, and I want to get this part done, at least the top of it done, before I move on to the top part. That way this has time to dry and set up. Um, so when I can put the top back on, it'll be ready to go. But we'll be doing that in a different room. <laughs> Okay, so I did get a bucket of water. <laughs> it's going to make it a little easier to rinse out my rags, which were filthy, and the scraper. So I need to get in there. If anything, just get all that dust out. Okay, this one's clean. I'm going to let it dry um, before I get back to the top and start trying to strip it. I have no idea what kind of wood this is. I don't even know if it's real wood, but I'm going to try to strip it. Um, if it doesn't work to where I can stain it, then I will do some type of faux stain. Um, but we'll see what happens. Okay, so while that's drying, in the other room, we'll go ahead and start on the top piece and clean it up. Um, I got to take off something first, though. I'm going to take off this little piece here. Thank you. 
may not be easy to do. There we go. Time to go find me a hammer and a chisel, I believe. All right. Fingers crossed. Okay, it looks like they're in like form fitted here. So I may end up having to cut it to get that out. I just really don't want that piece there. Okay. So, I think I will go get the jigsaw. All right. Guess we're cutting. All right, there we go. Nothing a power tool can't take care of, but that's why it wouldn't come out. Ta -da. I love chisels. Okay. <laughs> All right, and I still got that one to take off.
I was really not wanting to cut this one because I don't know if I actually want it removed or if it will look better on. Um, so now I'm in a predicament. Oh, decisions, decisions, decisions. Okay. Well, I'm going to take it off. I'm going to cut it off. I think it's going to look better without it. I want it to have a little more of a modern look. Um, yeah, so. Power tool. Well, now I have a predicament. This will not let me go up that high, this little ledge. And now I have to do something. We'll do a handsaw. Okay, not much of a handsaw, but hopefully it'll work. It's a little Dollar Tree special, so here we go. Okay, yeah, I think it looks better anyway without it. All right, now we can start cleaning it finally. I wish I could remove this, but there are no screws on the bottom, which means they're glued. So if I try to take that off, I'll just probably ruin it. So I'm not going to do that. Okay, I don't know what happened to my sound, but I'm going to try doing this voiceover. Right here is where we've got to fix that loose track on the drawer that's going to keep it from sliding properly. Um, there was a screw missing, which was causing it to not work right. So the first thing is I've got to find a screw. Um, I did get lucky and found where the screw had fallen into the cabinet, but I had a couple other drawers that I needed to go and look for a screw, which thank goodness we have just a little screw box, just random little screws that I found. But I started by removing the track. That way I can get a better look at it. And then I just wanted to make sure that that screw fit down in the hole. And it did. So I'm going to put the track back on.
All right, it's been 30 minutes, so let's do this. I'm gonna use an old paint pan to collect some of this stuff in. And I got this scraper. Okay, it looks like there are still some spots that could use some more, so I'm going to spray some more on it and let it sit for a little while longer. All right, let's try this again. See if I can get the rest of it off. And what I can't get off, I'm just going to sand off. All right, I'm going to get a wet rag, a wet clean rag, so I can wipe that down. All right, that's going to have to dry. And in the meantime, I'll clean up the mess. Okay, so while the top's drying, I am going to just do a scuff sand on the body. Okay, 80, it's going to be two cores, so I'm just going to use a 220. And you're going to want to make sure you wipe down all the dust. It's best to use a damp rag or a tack cloth. And yes, we're definitely going to have to use a stain blocker for something like this. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing to the top. This one, I have some holes I'm going to have to fill and touch up. So I'm going to get the wood filler and do that while I'm thinking about it. Okay, just using some sustainable wood filler. Okay, so one thing, I've got these really deep ones where I took those pieces off. That's going to take a lot of wood filler. Okay, so this is the piece that we took those ledges off of the top that have these real deep holes. Okay, so in order to fill those deep holes, 
I've got a 3 8 inch square dowel that I'm going to measure and cut pieces off and then use some wood glue and glue them into the spot, let them dry, and then that way we've got less wood filler that we're going to have to use because I will fill up the remainder. That way I can make it nice and smooth and it'll be ready to paint. And then to cut the dowels, instead of going all the way out in the garage, I've got one of these that I got off of Amazon. And very handy, but it'll cut right through. All right, now that we've got this all dry, where we filled those big holes and the little holes, I'm gonna Want to give that a good stir.
Okay, so moving back to the front, we are going to apply a gel stain to the top of the bottom piece. Once I do that, I am going to take a brush head off of a broom and with the coarse bristles, wipe over that gel stain in hopes to give it a faux wood look. Okay, so this is the next day on the top. It is still sticky. Um, I have a feeling I'm gonna have to strip this back down. Uh, I think I let it I put too much on in spots so it wasn't able to dry. Either that or it's just really humid, but I don't think it's humid here. Um, so before I strip it back down, I'm gonna try putting a whitewash on it just to see how it looks, to see if it gives me the desired effect that I'm going to be looking for and then I might let that dry for a little bit and then see how that goes um, otherwise it will have to be restripped on the top again so let's see what happens strip it. Okay, got it restripped. I am going to try just a natural stain. So there are so many different ways you can go about doing this. I was going to do a faux stain with some paint um, because I do prefer to work with a water-based over the oil base. It's just clean, easier to clean up. Um, but I am going to use special walnut. I'm going to go ahead and stain the wood. I'm not going to use a pre-stain conditioner because I actually like the way it goes on without the pre-stain conditioner. Um, but afterwards, I'm also going to go over with a whitewash once the stain has time to almost dry. Uh, so we'll get started and fingers crossed because I don't want to restrip this. <laughs> the second restripping was a lot harder than the first. Um, it was a lot stickier. Um, so let's get started with this. <laughs> doing it this way is that it was going to be too orange. But I'm hoping I'll like it with the whitewash. five minutes and then I'll wipe it off. All right, it's been five minutes, so I'm gonna go ahead and wipe this back. Okay, I'm going to let this sit and dry roughly an hour uh, before I start putting the whitewash on it. Um, that's gonna tell me if I like it. Fingers crossed that I like it. I not going to restrip it. I will just paint over it and we'll do something different. <laughs> but anyway, we'll let that dry for an hour. Okay, so it's a little splotchy. I'm going to sand it down, real light sanding, and then I'm going to put another coat of stain on it before I attempt the whitewash, just to see if I can't get it a little more even. And we'll see what happens. Quick. 
Okay, we'll let that sit for a few minutes. Okay, so that sat for about five minutes. I'm gonna wipe it down, let it dry, and then I'm gonna try the whitewash. Hopefully I like it. We're going to let that dry and then we'll apply the whitewash. I'm only going to let it sit for about 30 minutes. Okay, time to apply the whitewash. This is after the first coat and it's definitely going to need a second coat. Okay, so we're going to put the protective finish on the top, I'm going to use this polyacrylic water-based and this sponge I got on Amazon. Um, it's just a waxing sponge. So I'm hoping that'll just make it go on smoother with the minimal amount of bubbles. So let's get this going.
right, we're going to let that dry for two hours before we put another coat on. Okay, so for the bottom, I'm going to use a finishing wax clear coat. This is from Jolie. I did purchase it off of Amazon. I have a wax brush that came with my chalk paint brush that I use for painting. Um, it came in the set. So we are going to go ahead and do that to the bottom piece. And I am also planning on doing a distress on it, just a very light one. That's why I didn't go through and cover up any of the flaws, the scuff marks, because I knew I was going to stress distress it. And so let's go ahead and get that on. And I'm going to use the wax. I'm going to use a Dixie Bell brown wax to do the mild distressing. But I'm going to go ahead and put this top coat on it first. Okay, so I've got the doors painted. I've got the drawers painted. And now I'm just going to put a coat of the wax on it. Again, that's the finishing wax top coat in clear. So I'm going to do that. And then when I am finished with that, we're going to come over here. And I dumped all the hardware <laughs> in a bucket. I need to spray paint them and I'm going to spray paint them in this satin protective enamel by Rust-Oleum. It's in a flat black. So I will spray paint all of those and let them dry. I'm going to see what they look like after I paint them, uh, whether or not I like them. I still want to kind of keep that antique-ish, new, modern farmhouse type look. So. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Trying something new. I have a vision in my head, and well, we know sometimes visions don't always come out, but I will be spray painting those. I did clean them very good with the same 505 prep that I used to clean the hutch with before we started on it, and uh, got them really clean. Extremely clean. I was really impressed. But as you can see, they're tarnished, and they just need a good makeover. So that's what we're going to do. All right. Okay, so I am going to find a conspicuous, inconspicuous corner um, to try this. I've never used this Dixie Bell. Best dang wax in the color brown before. Um, I've never distressed with any kind of wax before, other than say like your liquid wax, but this is a hard wax. Um, I'm going to start out with a paper towel, put a little bit on my finger with the paper towel, just like so. And I got just a little bit on there. And then I am going to see, fingers crossed, that I like this. Um, here we go. Here goes nothing. I've got some little brushes here that I'll use to kind of blend it in. Let's see how it looks if I wipe away. Oops. Okay, should probably use a different towel. Okay. 
not sure if I'm liking this. Okay, I've wiped most of it off. I'm not sure if I like it. I guess I just need to take the plunge and put it over there and wipe it off. So I guess that's what I'll do. Okay, so what I decided to do was use a brush. I'm going to dip it into the wax, and then I'm going to blot a lot of it off. Um, that way, when I put it on, I have better control. So I don't want a whole lot of distressing just a little so I'm just going to go along the edges I guess you kind of get the gist of what I'm doing here. Okay, just like so. That way I've just got better control of it than taking a rag and wiping it on and then buffing it out. And I'm just going to do that throughout the whole thing. All right, so I finished spray painting all the hardware and I've got them reinstalled. Got that top put back on the bottom. Everything is all distressed and I think it came out really good. And I just love the way this top part came out. And all the distressing came out very well. It's amazing what a little bit of paint, a little bit of time can do to make over an old piece of furniture. If I would have gone out and bought something like this from the store in solid wood like this piece is, I mean, heck, I probably would have been looking well over $1,200. So it definitely saved some money. You guys let me know what you think about it. Let me know in the comment section below. Do you prefer this? makeover or did you prefer the original again i'm really loving it i know it looks really washed out with the walls being so white that i just recently painted but i think once i get it decorated and get some things hung up on the wall it'll look very nice and i just want to thank you guys for watching me transform my old piece of furniture and don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell it'll alert you whenever i upload a new video a new video. You can see I do have the after. Yeah, I have the after. After what? The aftermath. Jeez. It's very hard talking to the camera. Okay.
<laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> she says, hello. <laughs> Come on. Go away. Oh, let me do this. <laughs> okay. <sighs> Okay, you can't see it down. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome to my channel. In today's video, we are going to be doing a hutch makeover. I'm going to take an old hutch that I have and I am going to turn it into something that... Uh, bleh, 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 bleh. <laughs> okay. Okay. <clears throat> <laughs> and turning it into something more of the <laughs> can't even say it. <laughs> Gosh. Okay. What are we on? Like take five? <laughs> Gosh. Okay. Hi guys. Welcome to my channel. I'm Chris, and today we are going to be doing a hutch makeover. I'm going to be taking an old hutch that I have and turning it into something more of my style today. More style, stylish style, more of the style that I prefer. <laughs> okay. I'm going to be doing a hutch makeover. I will whoop. I can't even get past the first sentence. <laughs> Hi, guys. Hi, guys. Hi. Hello, guys. Hi. How you doing? 